Hello everybody and welcome back to another video from HSTV. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a full walkthrough tutorial of how I make summary notes. This is something that a lot of you guys request all the time, so here I am with another Tab S7 Plus Samsung Notes note taking tutorial. Now, if you are new to the channel and you don't know who I am, my name is Heen and I am a second year medical student at the University of Edinburgh. And as a medical student, I have to take a lot of notes. And I have to say, during my first year of medicine, I was taking handwritten digital notes for every single lecture. However, as I've moved to second year, I find that this is not very time efficient and I've moved to making summary notes. So let me define what I mean by this. So for most lectures, I just import lecture PDF slides and I annotate them as I watch the lecture and that's pretty time efficient and gets the work done. However, there's a few topics here and there that I feel need extra consolidation and it's not until I put this stuff into my own words and go through it properly that it's going to stick in my brain. So for these kind of topics, I like to make summary notes. So this is what I'm going to be showing you guys today. And the last thing I'm going to say before I take you through this tutorial is I want you to put yourself in the mindset of a teacher. I don't want you to think of yourself as a student who's struggling on a topic and someone who's confused. I want you to think of yourself as a teacher who's preparing materials to teach their students. This kind of mindset is what's gonna make this video more effective and useful for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, everyone, so I'm on my Samsung notes right now and I've taken these two notes out of their folders because this is what we're going to be working with. I first want to show you the lecture that I'm going to be trying to summarize. And this, you know, you don't have to be a medical student or a doctor. It's just for a bit of context so I can explain things. But this was on body washer balance and diabetes insipidus. Now, this is a very, very long lecture and I'm not gonna be summarizing all of it. I'm gonna be summarizing about 25 slides from it. So basically up to here. All this stuff is what I'm gonna to try to compress down and get straight in my head. So this is the goal for my summary note, which is really important to identify right in the beginning. Now, before I actually show you how I made the summary, I want to show you a preview of the summary so you guys can kind of see my style of note taking, I guess. So you can see here, I've got um, body washer balance and disorders, then I've got um, flow charts, diagrams, and I've just tried to summarize it as much as I could. Um, I've got some images in here as well, but this is the kind of thing that I was trying to go for to help me understand this topic a bit better, and it's certainly better than having to go through 25 slides of work. This is only four pages, and I now understand the topic so much better. Okay, so I've actually just put this in split screen so we can follow through with what we're actually doing. Now, first of all, just looking at my Samsung Notes summary note here, you can see that I've used individual black lined pages and this can all be chosen from the top here. If you click the three dots, you can choose your page template. This is the page template that I'm using and you can also choose the page color as well. I've gone for the black. Now, the reason I've gone for individual pages rather than continuous is because I wanted to save this as a PDF after so I can share with people. So that's why it was just easier for formatting. Another point to make here is that you can see that I've used three different thicknesses of pen. And although they're all white, it can get fiddly if you're trying to readjust the thickness every two seconds. So I'd highly recommend that you make a favorites bar. And to make a favorites bar, you just choose the pen that you're on and then you can click this little star at the top and it will add it to your favorites bar. You can see here that I've, a I've actually got three pens added to my favorites bar of varying thicknesses. So very quickly to go over the thicknesses, for this large heading at the top, I've used a 40. If I click on my S Pen, I can now switch between the pens really easily. For these small headings right here, I've used a 20. And for the little writing everywhere else, it's a number 10. So you can see that for me, thicknesses did matter. Okay, so let's continue then. Um, you can see here on my lecture slides that the first thing that I need to try and summarize is this kind of uh, basic information right here. So to do that, this is kind of one slide. I'm going to make it one section of my note. You can see that I've just put in red here. 
So to do that, I've written basics. There's nothing really basic around here because there's just so much information and a lot of it we didn't even need. And then I've gone and used a lot of bullet points, arrows and underlining and things like that. So I highly recommend one of your best friends for making notes is going to be using bullet points, arrows, um, little dashes for sub bullet points and even like starix as well all these kind of things it helps to connect things in your brain if you're just presented with you know a ton of writing and you know as as it is with this okay there's a lot of writing on this right it's hard for your brain to make those connections and it's gonna have to go out its way to logically problem solve right but if you already have arrows in place and bullet points and things that are already being interlinked on the page Then it can really help your brain to make those connections a bit more effortlessly Now that's like a really long-winded way of saying, um, you know, just put it down how you think And I think if I was explaining this to someone, this is how I would do it Another thing to point out is that before adding all this colour, you know, I had everything just in plain white and I add the colour afterwards because it does help to coordinate things a bit better. Now, to add in the colour, um, number one, I used the highlighting tool. This is the kind of general settings I have it on, um, kind of a halfway transparency and the thickness doesn't really matter too much because it's a highlighter. Now, on the topic of transparency, for a highlighter, you can choose it very easily like here. However, um, with the pen, it can be a little bit confusing because there's kind of very limited options over here. However, you can see at the top here, these three that they've given you, these default colors at the top. If you click one of these colors, there's a wide range of shades and colors you can choose from and they will be at the top. They're available for you to use anytime. Now, I don't really use them too much because I find what I'm looking for um, in the pen tool and I can switch between them with my S Pen, so I find that easier, but the option is there if you need it. Now, again, with adding colour, you can see that there's a few things that I've kind of, uh, like the arrows and underlines and things that I've just put in just to help my brain a bit more. And I used it, uh, that by using uh, this tool, this change style tool. And here, I've got it uh, on the setting 10 right now because when I click it, um, it will put everything that I click in number 10. So for example, if I want this now in red, I just have to go over it and that's it. So um, yeah, remember that you have that tool there and I use it all the time. Okay, let's move through the lecture slide. So you can see here that the next thing is this like weird diagram that I am trying to understand, right? So the way that I've done it in my note is rather than just importing the picture in, I've tried to hand draw it. And I can't stress this enough, but one of the great things about having an S Pen and a digital note taking system is that you can hand draw things and it's just like paper. So I would normally do this on paper, so I'm doing it on my tablet. And I'm not a great artist, so I will admit that this uh, diagram was traced to some extent. Now tracing, some of you might say, is like not time efficient and um, it's like cheating or whatever, right? But if this is something, if like copying something out can help you to remember it, I think you should do that. So I'm going to show you guys how you can trace a diagram um, in Samsung Notes so that you guys can do it as well because it's a great technique to have under your belt. Alright, the way you can trace is first of all you need a screen grab of the picture you want to trace. So I've clicked the little smart select thing at the side here and then you're going to take like a copy of what you want. So I want this, right? Now I'm going to save this like this and this has been saved into my gallery now on my samsung notes sheet here i'm going to import an image from my gallery you can see that it's right here i'm going to click done and now that is here uh, for me i've made that bigger just so it's a bit clearer for us now all i have to do is essentially just trace over everything so i'm just going to make like a really bad trace just to show you that um it does work quite good uh, so give me a second just to do this Okay, and although that might not be very clear right now, when I actually move this image away, you can see that I have, you know, a pretty good replica. Like, this was done in a rush, but I have a pretty good replica of the diagram I was trying to get. Now, the rest of that is my job to try and label and understand, which is where it comes in, right? Because I think that just from this diagram, 
I, I could learn it off by heart like that, but if I'm actually having it in front of me and drawing it and labeling it, I think that's just a bit more interactive and there's a higher chance it's gonna go in. All right, let's get back to the note. So that is how I got this diagram and this image and I traced it and I color coordinated it and labeled it all up. I think it just sets a bit better in my head. Moving on, you can see that we now have um, another slide of text, okay? The way that I've uh, designed this, again, is very summarized. I didn't have to take a whole page for this or anything. I've labeled it thirst, just like they have on the lecture slide right here. But then I've made the feedback loop, this uh, diagram, a, a bit easier to understand on my end. So although the things are the same, but, I mean, I'll give you a very straightforward example, but you can see here that we have this pi p and arrow down right here, okay? That stands for plasma osmolarity, okay? The issue with this is when I'm going over my notes, I might forget what pi p is, or it might take a second for my head to adjust to that. So when I make my summary notes, I have to imagine I'm teaching this to someone and I'm deciding to write it as the plasma osmolarity rather than pi p, just because it's easier for me to understand. This is all about me, okay? Or when you're making your notes, it's all about you. And then I've kind of colored everything like that. And at the top here, I've written some stuff. And at the bottom here, I've written some stuff. I've got some arrows and other connections that I'm making. Essentially, I have now managed to summarize that slide into one little part of my summary. All right, moving swiftly on, we're gonna move on to ADH release. And you can see, so I'm now making marks on my lecture slides. Uh, you can see right here that we have another uh, diagram and I've made another feedback loop. I think it's just a bit more color coordinated and I think it will set in a bit better with me anyway. The next thing I wanna talk about is these horrible slides. Now, you know, most of the time, um, Edinburgh University slides are really good, but I don't know who made these slides. I hated them. I just hated, I normally like a black background, but this was just not setting in very good. It was way past the, the knowledge that we needed for our exams and it, I just didn't like it at all. But the problem with summarizing this is that it wasn't really fitting in nicely with what I was talking about here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to rejiggle this up a bit into an order that I felt suited a bit better. So I moved on to these AVP receptor table and I thought that this would come in a bit better here. So I put this uh, slide table over here and I basically imported that image into my note right here. And when I did that, I felt that it just flowed a bit better and gave me the knowledge that I needed to understand the next bit. Now, going back to these horrible slides, which take up like half of this uh, slide deck, I've summarized that into just the key points, what we needed to know. Because obviously the lecturer, they had said that some stuff was important and they said that other stuff we didn't really need to know. But the lecture slides were just overly crowded. And this is what I mean by making summary sheets. Um, so we didn't need to know like all of this stuff in this much depth. So what I did was I uh, imported one of the lecture slides to show that this is kind of what I was talking about. And then from that, I just put in some key points again, using my arrows and bullet points. The next thing to talk about is this factors affecting ADH release. Now, originally in the lecture slides, this has been split up into like three different slides. And what I wanted to do was to group it and under one heading and then, you know, put it into a summary. That's what the point of this is, right? And here you can see that there's a few kind of weird, complicated graphs. So here we have urine osmolality and plasma vasopressin. Now I have the same graph here, except I've just taken away these complicated numbers and I've just shown a trend rather than, um, you know, the, the, the scatter plot points because I, I think that the point of this was for us to understand the trend rather than to memorize exact values or anything like that. So that's why this is what I mean by summarizing things. Now, another important technique that I think you should know about is drawing perfect shapes. So obviously if I draw like a triangle right now, it's gonna be a bit wonky. There's no way I can make it perfect. Now, one way that you can do it is I can draw the triangle, hold my S pen there and it will turn it into a perfect shape. And the other way I can do it is by selecting the shape tool, then drawing my shape and then lifting my S pen off and it will turn it into the shape. 
Now there's a few differences between both of this, these techniques essentially. Um, let me get rid of this one, uh, it's irrelevant. The first one that we did by just holding our S Pen there, we are able to customize it to some extent, as in, you know, we can make it bigger and smaller and we can rub it out quite easily. Whereas when you use the actual shape tool, you can't rub it, the shape out as easily. And the other difference we have is when we select it, there's a few more customization options that we have. So you can make it wider, um, you can make it longer, you can also kind of invert it and make it a right angle triangle as well. So I guess the actual shape tool has its advantages, but um, saying that, if you are going to need like a, just like an underline or something like that, which is something that I use all the time in my notes for my headings, then actually having that tool just to um, have it like this and then hold it there and then your thing is underlined. That's quite handy and a nice easy thing to do. But if you do need proper shapes or if you're making a table or something, then the shape tool is definitely the way to go. So I hope that's given you a few ideas and uh, showed you some of the techniques that you can use in your day-to-day um, -day note taking and uh, summarizing. I hope that's uh, helped you guys out a little bit and you can see what some of the things that helped me. I guess the last stage in this, I mentioned this in the beginning, but I needed to save this as a PDF document. So the way that you do this, is you click the three dots at the top and you click save as file. When we save it as a file, you can see that we have a few options. Now I normally just convert it to a PDF because, and just choose the folder that I want to save it in, because a PDF is a universal file type and it's you know works fine on most devices. But if you don't want that, uh, you have a ton of other options that you can choose from as well. But I do think that the PDF or the Samsung Notes file, it works best for keeping your format as you can see it on your tablet or your computer right now. So I'd advise you go for PDF, but the other ones also work pretty good. All right, everyone. Well, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope it's been useful. I've tried my best to show you my way of note taking and my way of thinking when it comes to difficult topics. But at the end of the day, note taking is unique to you and you will think in a different way to me probably. So please do tailor these tools and these tips and tricks that I've shown you today to your own way of learning. And um, remember, you guys are not students, you guys are teachers. And with that, I will leave you to do your or not taking. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.